Welcome back. So at this point, we're in our GitLab environment and we've created the first project. Notice there's no repository, there's no files, just a standard project because so far, just a quick recap, we've created an instance in Kubernetes in the Google Cloud Platform. Well, first we created a cluster, then the instance, and then we installed Ubuntu on that instance. Within Ubuntu Linux, we installed the GitLab Enterprise Edition and then we integrated the two with an IP address. So now this IP address is pointing to our Kubernetes environment where we're now all set to in fact begin our GitLab environment. So I can create issues with the development code, I can do merge requests and so on. So at this point we've just started with the first project which is just learning DevOps, that's the name of the project. Before I actually divulge into the workflow, which is later in the lectures perhaps, let's take a look at some of the other configurations within the GitLab environment. So if I were to click on this particular project that exists, which is a blank project, because it says the repository for this project is empty at this point. A couple of things that are important we can automatically build and test your application if you enable auto DevOps. And this is super powerful with GitLabs within the DevOps arena where you can do end-to-end -end DevOps lifecycle. So all you have to do is just enable the auto DevOps. At this point, it's in beta version, but it works fairly well. We can also automatically deploy it as well if we add a Kubernetes cluster. So here's another powerful thing. Within GitLab environment, we are able to, in fact, create Kubernetes cluster right from GitLab. So we don't have to go to Google Cloud to create or go to Compute Engine within the Google Cloud and then create the Kubernetes clusters. We can do it right here. So that's a couple of powerful things that we can do. And notice we have two options here, right? We have enabled auto DevOps and we have add Kubernetes cluster. So first let's before I actually click on any one of these right and demonstrate this let me first show you the continuous integration and deployment. So within the CI CD you'll have an option called Kubernetes which is just awesome in GitLab. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Kubernetes and just to give you a word, by the way, uh, just last month, uh, this is 2018, right, May. So in April, GitLab kind of disassociated itself with the Azure environment. So they're not uh, offering their product within Azure DevOps. They're strictly focusing more and more on the Google Cloud Platform. Okay, so that's just news I wanted to pass by, especially those of you who are in the DevOps area. All right, so once I click on Kubernetes, notice here I can integrate the Kubernetes cluster automation, right? So this cluster will allow us to review apps, deploy our applications, run our pipelines, and much more in an easy way. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Add Kubernetes Cluster, and it gives me a couple of options. I can either create on the Google Kubernetes engine or I can add an existing Kubernetes cluster. Since we already have a cluster, right, we have something like, let's verify, let's go to our Kubernetes environment, let's take a look at our clusters. So I'm going to go scroll up, Kubernetes, and then we should have about a couple of them maybe. Yep, there we go. So we have Cladesk 5 and Cladesk 7. So there are two clusters that exist in Kubernetes. So I could either create, of course, a cluster within the Kubernetes environment, or I can navigate back to GitLab and create it from there. So one of the two. So let's navigate back to GitLab, and here we are. So I'm going to add an existing Kubernetes cluster for this particular project, OK? So I'm going to click on the Add an Existing Cluster, just give it a name, and I'm going to say Claydesk. Seven is the cluster name, and I can re-verify by going back to Kubernetes. So this is Cladex Seven, and that's the one that I want to use. So let's switch back to our 
GitLab. The environment scope is asterisk, which is by default is development, or you could use it for any, whether it's production, QA, unless you specify the name, that's fine. The API URL is the actual URL that we're using here. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it. If you have a certificate authority, you can use it. Token is also required. This is a service token. We can go to, let's say, Kubernetes configuration, right? And then find the service token. So if I were to navigate back to my Kubernetes engine, and let's say if I want to find the configuration, I just want to show you so you can actually take a look at it. And just navigate to configuration. And then from there, you can actually take a look at some of the secret keys and that particular path. Okay. So I just want to give you a pointer. And as a homework, go ahead. You can do it yourself because that lists the entire objects, the system objects, and the secret keys. So I have it here uh, written down. Let's see, on my notepad here. If I scroll down, here is the default token path. So I'm just going to copy it. Navigate back to my GitLab. And then paste it. Project namespace is optional. And once I'm done, inputting all of this information, click on Add Kubernetes Cluster. And this is going to go ahead and integrate Kubernetes with GitLab. So now I can control how the Kubernetes cluster integrates with GitLab. And if I scroll down, I'll have various options such as the Helm Tiller, which is simply a package. It, it, it's a GitLab package that kind of acts as a manager, right? So it streamlines the installation and managing Kubernetes application. And then we have our ingress, which is, of course, our external IP address that we use. The Prometheus is an open source monitoring system. And then the GitLab runner, which is important because this is a, 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 per, a runner, right? Which takes one job to the other, one, one place to the other. So it connects to this project's repository and executes the CI CD jobs, pushing results back and deploying application to production. And then of course, my Kubernetes cluster details are already here and some advanced settings if I want to remove the integration. So this is not going to delete the actual Kubernetes cluster, just remove this particular connection within GitLab. And notice the blue dot, which signifies that, yes, we are successfully connected with GitLab within our Kubernetes environment. So right now, if I click on, let's say, CI CD pipelines, nothing exists because I've not started with any of the pipelines or the project itself. Similarly with jobs, no jobs to show. Schedules, there's not even a single schedule at this point. Environments, we do not have any environments right now, just the default that we're working with. So within the CI CD notice, it's fairly blank at this point because we have not started yet. So I just wanted to quickly demonstrate how we can actually either create a new cluster from within GitLab or attach or connect to the existing Kubernetes cluster. So let me go back to our project here. There we go. Next, I want to do enable DevOps. Okay, since we connected to the Kubernetes cluster, notice one of the icons or one of the buttons here that we earlier saw is not available anymore because we already configured that part. So next, very important, I want to show you last, in fact, is enable DevOps. I'm going to click on this, and this is going to take me to an options page. Fairly straightforward, though. So I'm going to say enable auto DevOps, and then simply scroll down. These are just standard values. I'm going to leave everything as it is, and then simply click Save Changes. And this is going to say the pipeline settings for learning DevOps, which is the name of the project, were successfully updated. Awesome. The repository, however, is empty because we have not added any file or cloned anything into this repository. So a new auto DevOps pipeline will be created after a new file has been pushed to a branch. 
So now our auto DevOps environment is fully set up. Everything that we create from here on out is going to be using the actual Kubernetes engine. And then we are all set to go. So I hope this helps practice super powerful, very interesting. The more you work with it, the easier it'll become for you. So I hope this helps. Let's move to the next lesson.